So this month I thought as a tutorial I'd do a comparison of styles. Um, so the marker versus the kind of painted technique. I start with the Pro Marker drawing and because we're doing trees I choose three shades of green. A dark green, a medium green and a light green. And I start using the light green and I use the thick chunky nib because I'm going to lay down, you know, the just block in areas of foliage pretty quickly. And the thick chunky nib allows me to show big chunky areas of foliage as well as if I tilt it on the side individual little leaves as well because when you look in a tree you can't see all the individual leaves you can usually see lots of um, chunks of foliage as well and then I use the fine nib to do sort of upward strokes from the trunk all the way up through the tree to try and show the branches and the twigs that are the, the skeleton of the tree. Actually I tend to do um, downward strokes as well as upward strokes but the effect is still the same you're trying to show that skeleton moving upwards through the tree holding all the leaves together with the shape of the tree blocked in that's when I go to my medium marker so this is darker than the lighter one but not too dark don't want to go too dark too soon and again I'm using the chunky thick nib for this which is leaf green and I'm trying to suggest that there are now areas of shadow uh, amongst the tree and that those areas of shadow are sort of on the lower part of the tree. You know, each clump of foliage, the shadow is on the lower edge of that, keeping the top of it light. Um, so the light source coming from above is going to hit those leaves, so you want the tops of the leaves to be light and the shadow to show from underneath. Um, going to the thin nib again to do the upwards or downward strokes of the twigs and the branches as well. Just adding strength and clarity to them now so you can see them much more clearly throughout the body of the tree. So I move on to my darkest marker now and I decide to use this one to do the branches and the twigs first uh, instead of doing the foliage first so I can see how it's going to look once I've got much more strength and much more clarity on the actual branches and twigs growing up through the tree. See how that looks. I'm hoping that the use of sort of broken lines that you can just see behind some of the leaves will give the tree a, a sense of 3D and a sense of depth uh, because some of those branches and twigs are obscured by the leaves. With those three stages done, as you can see, there's, there's a case to be made for leaving it exactly like it is. You've got depth in the leaves, light and dark, but you also can see the, the branches and the twigs through and behind the leaves. But I couldn't leave it and I decided that I would use the, the final dark colour to put some darker areas of foliage. So I'd have leaves of three different uh, shades, you know, a light, medium and dark on the actual tree. This is just a personal choice, it's just something that I wanted to do. Just to give it that extra oomph and give it that extra um, sense of depth hopefully by having the three shades of leaves on the tree. So with the Pro Marker one pretty much done it was time to get started on the Aqua Marker one for comparison. Uh, and I started again with my lightest color, but I only decided to use two colors here. And because Aqua Markers have water added to them, I don't have to be fussy laying down these block colors here like I was a little bit with the Pro Markers. I can be far less fussy and just sort of um, sketch the colors on at this stage. And there you can see my two colors that I'm using. And the reason that I don't have to be fussy is because I'm going to blend those colors together when I add the water, which is what you can see me doing now. And by blending the lightest and the darkest colors together, I'm going to get my mid-tone, if you will, through using those two colors and blending and mixing them together. So all I'm doing there is just adding water to the aqua markers fresh on the paper and just moving that water as it soaks in with the marker colors around. And also remember, I didn't do lots of details when I was laying down the marker basics um, and I'm doing that now you can see I'm using the brush and the paint that is on the brush to um, put in little details like the individual leaves and the edges of the tree which I wasn't worried about when I was just laying down the block colors I definitely used more water at the top where I wanted the colors to be more dilute and paler but as I got down to the colors that I was doing at the base of the tree I used a little less water so I had to brush a little bit more to blend those two colors together but hopefully it would mean that this color stayed darker and stronger at the base of the tree which is what I was really looking for. Again I'm doing things like that just to give it that sense of depth so the base is going to be darker and stronger and bolder and the top where it's catching more light is going to be much you know paler uh, and to suggest that depth. Once I'd pretty much done the tree, it was time to add some details. And for this, I actually put aqua markers in a palette, as you can see, 
and uh, and then just like blended them with water. Uh, so I had in effect sort of watercolor on a palette and I'm using a finer brush for this bit. I'm using a size four brush uh, to just put in some delicate little bits of the branches and the twigs that, like I said earlier, make up the spine of that tree. The branches and twigs look quite dark at the moment, but remember this is in effect like a watercolor, so it will get paler as it dries. Unlike the earlier ProMarker sketch, you know, I didn't have to add these branches and twigs. I probably could have left it as it was, and you know, in its shape, uh, it suggests that it's a, a, you know, a tree. It doesn't maybe need the branches and the twigs, but I just wanted to add that extra little detail because I thought, for me, personal choice yet again, that it was what it needed to be finished. And when it's fully dried, you've got the two side by side here for comparison. The much more graphic um, ProMarker version against the slightly more painterly, more expressive uh, AquaMarker version. Each one took between 10 20 minutes to complete. So, fairly, you know, simple in terms of the time. Um, let me know in the comments below which one you prefer, whether it's the left hand one or the right hand one. And also let me know if there's any tutorials you would like to see me have a go at in future and put a video up on YouTube about. Just write me a note in the comment section below.